Um, so I'm Dr. Catherine Ellis. I go by Catherine. I'm an occupational therapist and an ASEX certified sexuality counselor. I'm also the founder and CEO of the Institute for Sex, Intimacy, and Occupational Therapy, which is a continuing education company for occupational therapists to help them understand, uh, you know, be better prepared to address sex and intimacy with their clients. My name is Jacqueline Rabb. I'm an occupational therapist. I previously worked out of the Milwaukee VA, um, where I did the majority of my learning and growth in terms of sexuality and OT. Um, during my time there, a lot of my work was done in a population with spinal cord injury. You know, I just came in and they had told me, you know, this is the first time we're ever hiring an occupational therapist. I had uh, the, my supervisor at the time, she wanted to um, kind of, she came back from a conference and so she wanted to add the OT and because you know, as, as, as many years and decades she had been in healthcare, she was just really beginning to understand what OTs and PTs can actually do and how it applies to hospice. And I worked as a home health aide for a gentleman who had um, C4 spare uh, quadriplegia, um, a spinal cord injury. And, um, and so I, Mike introduced me to a lot of assistive technology, a lot that he had kind of designed and crafted himself. Interest. When I got into schools, I got to learn how a lot of the students I worked with um, either were using or benefiting or maybe saw how they could benefit from assistive technology. And so um, I really appreciated the opportunity to be able to narrow focus and, and go in. And assistive technology has just happened to be one of the things that, um, that I just glommed onto as a passion. I'm the creator of the Next Level Occupational Therapy um, group, program, platform, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it Next Level OT started a year ago in June and we have a membership um, site for occupational therapy professionals where we do tons of monthly trainings, we have tons of resources, discounts, things like that. Um, and then we have different programs. One of our biggest programs is called Therapy Business Builder where we help therapists across the United States build their own business and start their own business. You know, as much as I can help a lot with infant feeding, there was that pull, like always those parents that have that desire to get to breastfeeding. You know, they come out of the NICU under tons and tons, they maybe had a really long NICU stay or whatever, and the one thing that mom has always wanted to do is be able to breastfeed. And I got sucked in and fell in love. My name's Erin Muston first I'm an occupational therapist. I currently practice um, at Craig Hospital, which is a um, rehab facility for spinal cord injury and brain injury. My specific practice setting is assistive technology. I kind of look at the games as um, almost from an activity analysis perspective, which sounds incredibly nerdy, but I want to know what the controller demands are of a game, like how many buttons and joysticks do they need? And then I can grade that based on what a person's abilities are. So I tell a lot of gamers initially that, um, cause everybody likes to play Call of Duty, everybody likes to play, play Fortnite. And after um, a catastrophic injury, those are not the best games to start with because they're so complex. Um, so I frame it that way. I say, okay, I know you love these games and we're working towards those games, but we may have to work up to that, right? So we may start with a game where it's just one joystick and one button and then build out from there as they gain capacity. I am in California, so I've been in OTR for eight years. Let's uh, see, my specialty in OT is in autism, social media, and uh, recently I was also at TEDx for Max. I'm the only OT, not only that I have spoken at two TEDx events, so I'm the only OT who has more than one TEDx under my name, but also the only OT person to ever organize a TEDx event. I think anytime you're working with somebody in the community who has mental illness, that one that's all about just helping that person kind of reclaim the identity that they had before with the barriers that they're now experiencing. Um, help them get back into the community, get back to being a father if they want to, or a good partner, um, getting back to having a job or participating in the hobby they loved, being a musician, whatever it is, that's, that really speaks to the OT concept of helping somebody identify a meaningful activity.
our services is advocacy for the blind, helping people. We have a low vision clinic that we have um, individuals who maybe have developed a vision loss for a whole host of reasons. And the occupational therapists really need to get in touch with is really the, the science of sleep and understanding how and why people sleep. I think a big roadblock as far as teletherapy goes for um, OTs is a lot of times we're either not included or we don't initiate evidence-based practice. Like we kind of just like hang out in the background and wait for everyone else to do it. I'm like a very big proponent in like, let's do some research. Let's try to like show people our value. Like we have value. Um, and the, the research can be done. It just needs to be done. Say that the you know the knowledge base for adapting um, playground equipment really comes deep through my understanding of what occupational therapy is. You know, come close to emerging into the our world of our wonderful profession, you're going to understand that we see the world differently.